I'm sure, yeah, you can sympathize with those involved. They got me in this because they said I can make some hot chocolate with this. Oh, yeah. We're going to walk you through how we set this thing up uh, with the La Morzoco and then the, the Mocha Master. Okay, welcome to Destination OG1. Uh, this is our uh, place in Helen, Georgia, in the Smoky Mountains. I'm gonna try something a little different here today. Um, there are certain things that need to go into this house that I'm not an expert on. Uh, and I wanna be as authentic as possible about this. This is something that I, I don't have an interest in. You see from the title of the video, we're setting up a legitimate uh, coffee solution because with something like 80 or 90 percent of people that come here are going to want something or want some sort of solution and much like the garage you go in there and it's perfection it has everything professional grade uh, that you might want i wanted to have the similar experience with our appliances with uh, eventually a racing simulator uh, put an elevator in the house uh, and do some things that are that are maybe a, a level above what all of us have at home uh, but do that with with coffee the only problem is i don't drink it i'm not interested in it it's not something that i clearly have an expertise on i don't want to have an expertise on and so we're going to experiment with this experiment with this in the future of bringing in you know outside experts so we have luke from coffee house uh, from um, uh, detroit is that where you're coming from so from the detroit area uh, he's setting us up with uh, professional grade espresso uh, as well as uh, professional grade, you know, like a traditional coffee maker. Uh, I think we'll show you some things you may not be aware of. Uh, and then also uh, we'll, you know, we're going to follow up later here today and we'll have a, a DIY uh, or a, a tutorial how-to series for those that do come and stay at the house. So we're going to test this, test the waters here on, you know, providing a solution through DestinationOG.com. It's going to look like this. We're going to walk you through how we set this thing up uh, with the La Morzoco and then the, the Mocha Master. Uh, I'm still not going to drink a cup of coffee, but uh, I know that uh, most people that come here will. Uh, and so we're going to take you through what we have here, why we have it, uh, and Luke's going to show us all about it. And then we're going to dial in the process of, of how this stuff works. Fifteen grand worth of stuff here. How many <laughs> right. eight dollar um, espressos would that be? Yeah, I mean, you could argue the same for like, you know, why do I buy anything but a Kia Rio? Right. You know, it's. Uh... All right, so Luke's here. Uh, Luke, just give us a two minute. What's your background? Huh? Why are Why are you here? Yeah. And somebody else. Yeah. Uh, right. Right. Um, so my name is Luke. I own a coffee house in Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, coffee house in Detroit has been my passion project for the last six years. Spending a lot of time really searching for products and ways that we can make cafes better, essentially. We have built over 100 different um, cafes in and around our area, so Michigan, mm -hmm. going into New York, going to California, places like that, and providing oversight on developments. Um, from an efficiency standpoint, from a quality standpoint, we've done everything from the floor planning, all of the CAD work, all the way up to the final product, training, mm -hmm. everything like that. And along the way, we find a lot of interest, we find a lot of um, products at the end of the day that I think translate well into the consumer market. Mm. And uh, as you're likely familiar, a lot of the commercial products that are amazing tend to move towards... Uh, yeah, it's my whole know, MO, it's my whole exactly. life, right? You find professional grade things that yep. work may or may not be applicable to the consumer, um, Absolutely. mainly because of their lack of support for the consumer right. that oftentimes become the best solution. You know, Cox hose reels, Krenz of pressure washers, yeah, and exactly. sonic cabinets and tools. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of applications yep. that we've done. And so that's why, you know, talking with you, this, this made a lot of sense to me that yeah. we take professional grade 
And then, if, I mean, if you're teaching, you know, hourly employees how to use it, why couldn't we teach doctors and lawyers and engineers, <laughs> right. and business owners and super successful people? Absolutely. That's who's going to buy this stuff yep. to use it. Same yeah. thing. Same thing with a, you know, a $2,000 pressure washer. Right. Yep. I remember when I bought my first one, it was like that same kind of feeling that I felt with a lot of these. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think what we're looking at here, this lineup specifically, is the kind of talking about exactly what we're talking about right now. These are product companies that have developed commercial grade, commercial level products mm -hmm. for the consumer. Specifically, when we get to this one, there's a lot to talk about. You know, this is essentially a modified commercial machine. This mm -hmm. is this exists in probably 40 cafes that we provide to. Yeah. And it's just essentially pared down for the home. They built a little water reservoir, things like that, that make a bit more sense. Right, less set up, less. Yeah, you know, less. just a lot less to think about. Gotcha. I think um, from a commercial perspective, things just might not be needed. But so let's so let's start down here on, on the stuff and we're, we're gonna dig into, we'll have separate shorts videos. Um, we're gonna make a how-to series for the, 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 you know, the people that come to this house because you know, some people are gonna look at that and, 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 and feel it's too daunting. And so right. we're gonna have a whole DIY series for everybody yeah. when they come here. Uh, but let's start with this. I, th again, this stuff makes zero sense <laughs> to me. So I want to, like, everybody drinks cups of coffee. Right. That doesn't do that. I'm pretty <laughs> aware of that. Yep. This does. Yep, absolutely. So, so if you're just a regular Folgers or Maxwell House yeah. drinker, right, which is which would, to me would be the equivalent of a uh, Sun Joe pressure washer user, right? <laughs> right, um, yeah. Could we, you know, could we do something that is as much better, much higher Absolutely. Quality? And so tell me about yeah. what this stuff is and how it works. And so um, when it comes down to getting really into coffee and getting really interested in brewing good coffee, mm -hmm. what I think it starts with is eliminating and controlling variables. Like any other scientific project, you want to have control over certain variables. So you know those variables that you do change, things are going to change and you're gonna understand the change mm -hmm. a lot more clearly. Mm -hmm. So if we start over at this kettle right here, actually, um, this is all about temperature control. This is the first thing you wanna be able to control when you are making uh, just a little pour over coffee. You know, a lot of people like to nerd out with those pour over coffees. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we have here is we have a digital display on this side that we're able to adjust with this knob uh, to the actual degree. Plug yeah, we can turn it on. And so it's going to turn on there. Mm -hmm. There's no water in this, so it's not going to let us adjust any temperature or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you can adjust to the exact temperature. Mm, so it's uh, you know, it's fast, it's efficient. I've had mine for three, four years now, and it still runs. Yeah. So they also just released a couple new ones that we'll talk about probably down the line. So this has. I'm just thinking about this. You could make tea. You could do anything. anything. It just boils water, you know. And um, so we have temperature control, which is amazing. It has a hold feature, so you can leave it for a long time. Mm. And then secondly, with this uh, gooseneck here, it has also flow control. So when you pour, you're getting one consistent flow rate coming out of the water. I dig that. Okay. And that's really important, uh, as you know, um, to to really be able to have control of those variables. Gotcha. So if you have your flow rate down, if you have your temperature down. Now you're changing the type of coffee and the grind shape and size, and we can talk about that once we get there. So, but the only thing I keep hearing you know, are there, how close to diminishing returns are we getting here? You know, because I'm yeah. assuming this isn't like you could go many levels above this. Far beyond, yeah, absolutely. But the, what is this getting us to? Ninety percent, would you say? You know? Yeah, I'd say this gets you to about ninety percent. Okay. Um, this so gets you get from ninety to ten, to hundred or ninety 10x to ninety-eight. Ten x the price, probably. Got it. You know, yeah, okay. and I'm sure there's um, there are other categories of products that you get that same kind of experience, um, and it takes a special type of nerd to spend. Uh, you know, ten times the grinder. And as at the office, uh, we have one that's like. I think $3,400 for a home coffee grinder. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, it's not entirely feasible, but then you get into the construction and the build and you really start to appreciate the materials involved, titanium, everything like That's that. That's where value comes in. Like, yep. you know, how much do you value something? And Absolutely. Like I bought carbon ceramic brakes from my E92 for, yep. you know, they cost as much as an E92 would cost. Right, you know, yeah. A, you know, a higher mileage one. Yep. It's there's there's certain places that you may value, you know, a a you know diminishing return type. Absolutely. Or yeah, right. Choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So this is how we boil the water. Absolutely. And then, what, and then, so, we, grind, then we grind the stuff. Yeah, the yeah. Sense. So um, yeah, so we're you know this is our grinder right here. Um, and what I like about this one is it's really easy. You're not looking at um, like any other coffee grinder. You just turn it on and like what comes out, what comes out, you know, and then you turn it off. Mm -hmm. This is nice, and I think this is how every grinder should be. Is you just put in the amount you want, mm. so, and then that's it. It's just the only function of this tool is to grind coffee. It's not to dose coffee. It's not to weigh coffee. Okay. This, the only function that this has is it's a strong motor with a really quality burr set mm -hmm. and you have great control over those burrs. And so with coffee grinding, you have two flat burrs in this specific unit. And what they do is they get closer and further apart mm -hmm. and that would adjust your grind size. So the smaller the particles, the more extraction you're going to get mm -hmm. out of the coffee and it's going to taste what some people would call stronger more bold, uh, you know, have more bitterness, things like that. But if you back off, what you're doing is you're pulling those burrs further apart mm -hmm. and making the grind more coarse. What you're gonna get then is it's gonna be a bit faster, a bit lighter, but you will get, uh, you know, brighter flavors in coffee, things like that, more acidity. And so there's a good balance. So you're gonna provide us with a like the, these are the three, you know, the, what do you do? Like a procedure, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause unless you're really into this, I mean, I don't, I don't want to freaking I just, just tell yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so I think this unit actually kind of scratches the itch for a lot of what you're talking about okay. because this automates this process and mm -hmm. it automates the flow control process. You're not doing anything by hand. All you have to do is hit this button. And so we sell, a majority of these. We sell a lot of these at our retail locations. We also sell a lot of these online. And because there's a few really kind of redeeming factors about these. One is that they come in like every color of the rainbow imaginable, mm -hmm. every shade of black, everything like that. And so this is the stone gray, which I think is really nice. Oh. But um, so all you're going to do is you just add water in here. Yeah. And then there's this stainless steel arm right here carries the water over the coffee like any other coffee brewer. So um, you're going to grind it in that grinder yep. and slap it in this thing. Exactly. And, it, and then it sets it's the... out there. Yeah. And I chose, you know, a lot of people um, in the, a lot of people in the obsessed garage community are probably familiar with these and uh, often ask questions about the uh, thermal versus the glass pots. Mm -hmm. I personally like the glass um, just because that stainless steel kind of like taste you get off of the coffee is not mm -hmm. my favorite thing. Yeah. And I'm not, um, just a big fan of that diner kind of, you know, feel. I'd like to reduce the materials that the coffee comes in contact with, so I think glass is the perfect option. But uh, what I like about this is, that, one, it's hand-built in the Netherlands, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, second is it is so well serviced, so well warranted. You have a five-year warranty on this for all of your parts. So this could very like easily that. replace your Cuisinart or anything like that. Yep. Harbor Breeze or whatever nonsense. Yep. I think we have some nonsense like Starbucks thing that's made by yeah. Use <laughs> like, yeah. If you're gonna do this, what? I, I no. I think she has a Keurig thing now. Yeah. Yeah. What is mm -hmm. wrong? Like, if you're going to do this, let's do it right. And the Keurigs, you know, I think it's uh, it's sad because people buy those, and when they break, they're disposable. You know, they throw them out, yeah. they buy another thing, maybe a newer one, something like that. But if you're looking for a long-term, more practical quality solution, this is something like that. How much that. is this thing? Uh, 300-ish bucks. Oh, that's so, nothing, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so you got the warranty, and what you also have is you have, uh, when you hit that on, you're boiling water in about 15, 17 seconds. Oh, shoot. Okay. So you're not, and it's not... Um, uh, like boiling water, like a lot of the Mr. Coffees and the Cuisinarts and everything like that, where the water temperature is questionable and ranges highly. Yeah. This, uh, you know, during the pandemic and everything, I spent days and weeks and weeks testing this uh, with temperature probes, yeah. everything, testing the flow rate with timers. I have an Excel sheet yeah. of all of the data. To get to the and, consistency. Yeah. And this is by far the most consistent. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about elimination of variables, this controls your flow rate and your temperature at a really high level. So now I'm confused. This thing I'm not using with that thing. So what the heck do I use this for? So that uh, a lot of people like making more, more so pour overs. So they have like their little uh, funnel with the coffee filter and yeah. essentially they're doing 
this without the vehicle to carry the water over. They are essentially the stainless steel arm. Oh. And by doing so, you know, they can have more of a manual experience. So they'll have like a little funnel that sits on a certain type of cup or something? Exactly. Like oh. Yep. Okay. And it's, um, I think for people who are just getting into specialty coffee, I think it's a really important step that they make in the process mm -hmm. because it's one, it really connects you with how those variables change, you know, how much water you're using, all of your doses, because you have that sitting on top of a scale. So you really understand what you put in, what you intend to come out and what the result is. Mm -hmm. And this is obviously a lot more cost effective than something like this. Yeah. So it gives you, you know, a couple hundred bucks of leeway before you really commit. So to we it. put it in here because there's going to be some nerds that do that. Absolutely. Okay, yep. And then also, you know, people will make tea and everything like that. Okay. So. So then if we get into, you know, from my understanding, it, this is like you make a little baby cup or something? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, a full espresso machine. Um, yeah. So what we have here is the La Marzocco Linea Mini. Uh, La Marzocco is one of the largest espresso machine companies in the world. Okay. Um, they're all hand-built in Florence. And they are, they've proven time and time again uh, to be amazing machines. We sell, I mean, a couple hundred of these a year. Um, it's absolutely crazy how well adopted these are in the market mm -hmm. and also on the commercial side how well supported everything is so from a parts perspective from a warranty perspective we are a certified uh, technician and repair center for Marzocco in Michigan and so we get a lot of commercial machines coming in and what's great is the the similarities between these two when we open this up uh, when we install it I'll be able to point out a lot of similar parts uh, that are carried on the commercial machines and it's great. Everything's just essentially shrunk down uh, and put into this. And you're package. confident, like somebody who's never done it before, we're going to be able to teach them how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, things like steaming milk um, for a latte or something like that take a bit more practice for sure. And uh, it takes a little time to learn that. But making espresso is all about having good equipment. And we've got that squared away here. So okay. this paired with this grinder. Um, this this is amazing. Uh, it's exactly the same thing as this. It's a commercial machine pared down to a home machine. Couldn't I just use this grinder, or it doesn't make enough? It doesn't uh, grind fine enough. Oh, okay. And so there there really aren't many grinders in the coffee uh, world that grind both and do them both well. It's essentially you have one for this, one for this. Okay. And um, you know there aren't many solutions that are worth it. You know, that, that do both. Okay. And um, so this one is from a company called Malconig in uh, Germany. They started out as a grain grinding company way back like 100 years ago. And people started using them to grind coffee. And it got so popular that they started making just coffee grinders. And now they are the largest coffee grinder company around any specialty cafe. They all have these. And so they're, one of their more recent uh, models is the E65S. Um, and it's essentially this, but larger for a commercial setting. Okay. It looks the exact same. It feels the exact same. It adjusts the exact same, everything like that. And so this is the X54, essentially the same thing, just pared down for the home use because the other one is, you know, about this tall. Yeah. So just large. And um, what we have here is, I mean, just really high quality German coffee grinding with the, the best home machine you can buy. And um, if you ask really anybody in the coffee community, they tend to lean this one as well. And so what we have with this is, this is gonna allow us to dose the coffee properly. So this can be preset. You just pop this guy in here, just like that. Yeah. It'll fill it, dose it, you're good to go. You'll take your tamper here, oh, yeah. okay. push that down, lock in, and you're ready to go. Mm. And so there's a lot of steps obviously involved with this, but to make something that meets the quality you would get in a nice specialty coffee shop. Uh, there's a lot to be said about something like that. Uh, so I come in here, never done it before. I watch the video we're going to make later today, uh, which won't be part of a different video. Than yes. This. And uh, John Smith is going to be able to do something decent. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to uh, have that stuff here. Yeah. Right? yeah so yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. buy all that and have it here available. So people can test it out. And then my hope is that then the freaking people buy it. Yeah. Right. So we sell these machines. I mean, that's part of what I, if I'm going to do this and we're going to make this investment, you're making the investment and hooking me up with these machines. Yeah. We're going to sell some of this stuff. I Absolutely. Think. Yeah. So, so that's the, and, and that's been the big, 
you know, when I first talked to you, I wasn't interested at all. Right, like, yeah. Like, I don't care about this crap. But then as my gears started turning, like, this reminds me a lot when I was testing all the base pressure washers. I'm like, I hate these. Why am I doing this? Yeah. And then I come to find a few of them were pretty decent. So it changed my whole perspective on on how we provide, you know, pressure washing solutions. And so with with this, you know, I'm interested in the gear. I'm interested in, you know, homes. And I'm interested in, you know, this destination concept. Right. And so could we bring in an expert like you to, you know, to help me figure this out? Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of this just aligns with, you know, that pursuit of functional excellence. Yeah. All of these products align greatly with that, you know, that same kind of motif. So. And then you see the problem I would have with this personally is I don't know, somebody has to decide, like somebody has to decide, like this is not the best we talk about. This isn't like the ultimate grinder, but right. you have to make a decision. Absolutely. Right. Because of, you know, there's diminishing returns. You have to yep. make a decision. What's an acceptable outcome? What's Absolutely, an acceptable right. product? Uh, and so I can't do that. And so that's where I'm experimenting with bringing you in, bringing in an outside expert uh, to to help me or to make the decision on right. what, kind of like when I was a financial advisor, somebody had to decide what mutual fund to buy. Yeah, exactly. Buy. Yep. Uh, so that that's, I think, what this, taking on this sort of product line could make sense for Obsessed Garage and Destination OG because, um, because you know, we, you know, like you, like you said, you know, 80% of, of mm. you know, people have this crack habit, you know? Yeah, right. It's yeah, it's one of the accepted ones for sure. So, so. I think uh, I think what we'll start doing is we're gonna start to install and we'll bring you all along with, uh, with us on the process. So it should be a pretty basic install. We have a water line, so that's essentially all we need. You need a plug and yep. water line. That's about it. Um, we're gonna test our water here. Yep. We're going to then talk us through, this will probably be an hour long video of us, you know, kind of maybe be multiple episodes where we work through getting it set up. And then, like I said, through Obsessed Garage Shorts channel, we'll have uh, DIYs also through Destination OG. We're gonna have a very specific, this machine in this house, here's how you do this uh, for our you know tenants who come here and borrow this place from me. So let's, uh, let's get moving on getting this installed in place. All right. All right, so install time. That's correct, yeah. So, um, you know, traditionally these come with a little water reservoir tucked under here, mm -hmm. um, but for something like this, it's a little more permanent, you know, it's gonna just make a little more sense to just hard plumb it. What do you mean water? Oh, oh, so you can yeah. fill up. Yeah, so tank, you can actually just tank. pull this guy out. You uh -huh. know, this you'll dump out, but this just slides out. You can oh, fill okay. it right there. Gotcha. So, Because you're only making a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So you can get, you know, a good amount in there. But for from like a peace of mind perspective, you know, especially if you have good water, yeah. um, you know, they just make sense. You know, most of these that we sell, people end up doing this anyways. Yeah, got it. Okay. And so uh, it's a little bit more of a technical process, but you know, we're gonna jump in here as to like kind of how we plan on doing that. But essentially, um, what we're gonna do is take this shell off, mm -hmm. and we'll see our uh, water pump, and we're just gonna cool. kind of tie in right to the water pump there, and then we're good to go. And so. Yeah, we just got a bunch of flat heads on the front, and then this top actually just pulls off like that. And then I'm, I got Phillips all over there, so I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do we do things here? It just, uh, you know, for this, it just makes a little bit more sense. Um, if you don't plan on moving it around, the hard plunger. you don't need to do that one, by the way. Yeah. And it's just these front four. It's, there's eight of them on here, but you'll need to do the top, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So this will lift out, and you'll be able to see all the insides there. Um, it's cool. You know, I, I came from working on cars first mm -hmm. and then got into espresso. And I looked at this, and it just made so much more sense. Um, or, like, you know, from an ease of understanding perspective, just mm -hmm. because essentially it's just, you know, a couple little... Um, solenoids, one computer, and just brass. So made uh, things a lot easier from the tech support and repair side of the business. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this out. So what we're gonna do is this, which is what they call the brain, you know, we're just gonna kinda keep that away as we pull this off. And then um, there's a little temperature adjuster there, the boiler temperature. I've already moved it out of the way, but you kinda gotta shimmy it out of there. So. This is uh, definitely like a homemade process. They try to like, I would imagine, steer you away from doing any type of this repair on your home unit, but um, it's really not that bad. So, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna slide that off now. So is there any kind of um preventative maintenance that you would do or just oh yeah so yeah we'll talk a little bit um especially in the operations video kind of about just um cleaning you know keeping keeping everything clean yeah doing your part to make sure that coffee doesn't get gunked up in there or anything like that because the last thing we want is uh anything like that and then in conjunction there's uh different there's quarterly annually and uh biannually maintenance that uh commercial machines recommend mm -hmm. so we offer um kind of like a pared down version of that yeah. um and we'll talk all about that um as we get a little bit more into the operations but so what we have here is we have the pump um in and out and so what we're going to do is i'm just going to take this right here this whole assembly off which connects in up around and down to the water reservoir and that's the same way we're going to snake the uh, stainless line. Okay. So essentially, this guy is going to come off just like that. And if I move this out of the way, you'll be able to see there's this whole kind of guy here. You can bleed air with that right there. But so this brass assembly will come off just like that. And it's going to go in through and under there. Uh, it's definitely not my favorite thing to do, but there are worse jobs out there than snaking the line. But from an ease of like, uh, you know, reach standpoint, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of break this bit off too. Um, this I always like to hang on to, just in the instance I go back to a reservoir or I like take it to, you know, people who get really obsessed will take it on vacation and stuff like that with them, mm -hmm. so. And so what we're going to do is I can just kind of pull this line through like this and it's going to get down and go right under there. So this is where it kind of just takes a little bit of fiddling, but our reservoir is out now. So we can set that aside and then go ahead and get the, I'm going to grab the line. There's just going to be a lot of, you know, bending yeah. and whatnot to make it work. So I think if you were, you know, if you were, Building in the kitchen, you pick a spot and have a. I guess another advantage is there's a drained version. Is there is there a version of this where you wouldn't have the little? Yeah. So um, this actually comes with the option, which is nice. So if you ever decided to do a drained version, it's just a little flathead oh, okay, cool. stopper right there. Yeah. So that's it. And um, but I mean, again, we're not cranking out gallons at a time. So mm -hmm. I mean, you wash that thing out if you dump something in there. Yep. So not that yeah, big. just when you're done, you know. And yeah, uh, I was worried about not having a drain and like how clunky will that be, but I guess not really that big of a deal. Yeah, right. And so before we just pop on that stainless line, I just have a little adapter here for yeah. the inlet. So I'm gonna just throw a little tape on there. And this is the, for those doing this at home, this is the piece that leaks. So we just try and, uh, you know, crank this down as best we can. We didn't show you. Which kit we got? Actually, can we show that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, Lama by the way, does sell a kit, you know, to do all of this. But I, you know, I, I'd like to do the uh, the Home Depot setup. But so, really, I mean, the main thing you need is this, you know, just a three eighths compression stainless line, um, and that way you're going to be able to screw right onto there, get it around, and then plug this up to the inlet. Ideally, your, um, you know, your water inlet is going to be uh, just three eighths line right there for you. So, uh, you know, if you don't have that, that's obviously not something that's kind of involved in this. That's a more of a household question. It's a dishwasher kit. Basically. Yep. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just crank this down until I really can't get any more out of it. And so once I get that on, then I'll be able to get everything else hooked up. And these go quite a bit down as well. And these, um, when you're in here too, you know, if this is a machine you've had for a while, this would be a good time to do any of your preventative maintenance. You know, any of your like steam setups or anything like that, that's worth um, digging into, you know, or anything that you don't plan on try to, traditionally like getting to, like if you wanted to do adjust your pressure, um, you know, your output, that's how you can do that right there, which is nice. I adjusted ours on this machine a little lower just so we can get a bit more of a consistent shot for everybody. 
because mm. um, if you're running high pressure, there's a lot more variability involved. Well, I want to just make sure this is on there. Yeah, I'm not getting any more out of it. So we're locked in there, and then I'm just going to throw the compression line out. And so this is the part where there's a good bit of snaking involved to get it under here. I'm just going to kind of set that down there for now and get this. And this also, you know, you don't, you want to be pretty mindful that you don't uh, kink any of the brass or anything like that. But there's a good bit of, um, you know, sometimes bending involved with these ones. And what's great is, you know, it's at least a little bit flexible. So you're going to be able to get it on there, but it gets the job done. Thankfully, this is the only uh, real wrenching involved besides just hooking up to the end line and compression lines are routinely pretty easy. So at face value, these seem pretty intimidating, but when you kind of break it down as to like kind of, you know, you follow where the water's going, everything like that, it, t it tends to make pretty good sense if you have a, you know, a, a decent technical understanding of all of the little parts in here. You know, so how do you people do like this? That. You get up in the morning and you <laughs> make this? I mean, what's the, what's the, what's the protocol here for? You know, I mean, like the big thing for me is I, I came from working on these in a, uh, in a commercial setting, mm -hmm. which is much more, you know, high stress, high demand. People are usually when you're fixing these, you're fixing ones that need to be fixed now. And we've got customers who are ready to, you know, break the door down. So mm -hmm. working on stuff like this is a little more, um, you know, this, it's, it's a little more calm, it's easier. And doing these type of modifications really isn't the worst thing. I'm talking about like people, like what am I gonna do? What do you, when are they gonna use this thing? Like when do you drink this crap? Every morning. Every day? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, the thing for me is like, if I could replicate the cafe experience every day, I would save a hell of a lot of money and I would have a pretty nice morning. Yeah. It doesn't involve me driving anywhere, waiting in line. Yeah, but this is one of those things like, um, I used to uh, justify this before I you know, had a lot with my, with my wife and I'd say, you know, I'm gonna get this titanium exhaust, you know, I don't drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. How many drinks would you have to buy to pay for that one, you know, that one uh, yeah. exhaust that you just bought? Uh, so I don't know if that argument holds. I up. think um, this, this we got ten grand, fifteen grand worth of stuff here. <laughs> How many right. eight dollar uh, espressos would that be? Yeah, I mean you could argue the same for like you know why do I buy anything but a Kia Rio? Right. You know it's um, there's a va there's a value retention play, there's a reliability play, there's you know a variety. Well, again, of if I was factors. gonna drink this crap, this is what I'd be doing. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And so um, I'm sure, yeah, you can but sympathize you, with those involved. They got me in this because they said I can make some hot chocolate with this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we will talk. We were mentioning that earlier. We can talk all about that. Um, we've got a beverage director who makes all of our recipes from scratch. Okay. And uh, we were talking about setting up just like a recurring chocolate sauce recipe just to come down here and pour it bottles. Yeah. It's all good. And um, so one thing I did want to mention is for those who are doing this at home, you can see these two Phillips way down there. Those are going to be tightened down and hold this case in there. Um, for me, having done this, you know, a million times, I just keep them loose because the case comes off every now and then. And uh, having a long, you know, foot long Phillips going down there is not always my favorite thing to find. And uh, yeah, you know, I've never really bent any of these cases, but you would want to be mindful just from when you put any pressure on that. And this will bend back. There's a little slot right here if you look down low. This is where the wheel sets for the uh, boiler temperature. Um, for a unit like this that many people might have their hands on, I'd probably keep it tucked away just so people don't adjust any settings that they don't mean to. But so we've got two uh, screws here that need to get in place. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, yeah, I'm in on this side as well. That's it. Um, so we'll bolt this back up, stand the slides on. We're just gonna hook it up to the inlet and we're good to go. All right, coming in behind you. I've been up here for 
about a week now and I haven't had espresso the whole time. So this is an exciting moment for me too. So I've got an adapter. So we want three eighths stainless steel compression. So that's three eighths stainless steel. What we have is quarter inch uh, pulley. So if that's a push to neck connect fitting. I'll just cut that, that'll slip on and you can put his flex line on there and feed right into the machine. So if you're not plumbing in for something like this, um, or even for something as small as the batch brewer, it's uh, you know the third wave water little supplements here, um, or any type of like remineralization packet um, is really important to consider. It's uh, these little, it's 12 little like individual sticks of powder in there, and uh, they make a gallon of w usable water. Um, for the espresso machine, you can really half that. You can put two gallons uh, per packet in there. So, and that's perfect water for this machine. It's not gonna scale up. It's not gonna, you know, reduce the, the usability of the machine and it's gonna make your espresso taste awesome. Uh, they make like a dark roast profile as well if you prefer dark roast coffee, which is nice, but the classic, I think, personally takes the best, or so tastes you, the best. So you go buy jugs of distilled water. Yep, and you would take, uh, if you're doing it on the linea here, I'd do half the packet per distilled, shake it up. You can mm -hmm. store it or whatever. Um, if you're really lazy, uh, you could find like a Poland spring distributor. Um, they are they are one of the few people who get water nailed down from like a coffee perspective, but this is still edges it out and it's way more cost effective. Um, distilled water is definitely cheap. But so anyways, uh, yeah, you just add these and you can do them, you know, you store gallons in the fridge or store them wherever you need in the garage or something. Um, but I mean, for, I think they're like 15 bucks for this thing and that's a lot of water, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and it saves your machine. You know, the big question if you're not, if you're not plumbing is what water you're using. If it's too high in, you know, any of the, um, any of those solubles like calcium or something, it'll build up in the machine and completely total that thing from the inside out. So it's like putting the wrong oil in your car or mm. something like that. So, um, these are great. Uh, I use them every day. And I think if you had to, if you were, your question was, how can I change the way my coffee tastes for the cheapest amount of money, you could get those 15 bucks. It'll last you a long, long time and it'll completely reformulate how your coffee tastes. It'll be night and day. So I love those. I think that's most important. And then a grinder's next. So something like that is going to, you know, completely alter the way that the coffee is brewed. And so those two are the most important, but I think all of these are perfect representations of a commercial environment in the home. So. I recommend everything here. I'm gonna go ahead and run all the, the water out of here. It's gonna keep filling. Yeah, I have to admit, that thinking it's pretty legit. That's what it sounds. So, we're gonna let that heat up. Takes about 10 minutes from cold. I'm just making sure we got no leaks, but it looks like we are good to go. But we all know, um, you know, where that leak would be coming from. So we're good. And now we just let it, uh, let it do its thing. Once we do that, we can uh, make some coffee. This is where we get a little sciency with the whole thing, for sure. Anyways, let's see. Doing it six seconds. So we're at 11 there. So what I'm going to do is, so what I'm doing here is I'm weighing out the dose of the coffee. And so um, for me, we're going to start at around 18 grams of coffee going into here. And so I was at 11 there, so I'm gonna bump that up to nine instead of six. See if we can get 18 out of it. I need like a garbage can in here. Just yeah, maybe a little guy just so. Thankfully, once you get kind of the, you know, the basic parameters on this, it makes it pretty easy. All right. There's a good bit of fun involved with um, getting it all dialed in, so. Try 10, see where we land. Yeah. And thankfully they won't have to do this whole thing, you know, every time. 
Okay, so we're really close now, 18.1. I'm gonna start with this, just because it's uh, close enough, you know, we're gonna be able to adjust it accordingly. But, so now, I'm gonna still wait for that to heat up before we do anything else, but, you know, essentially we have this kind of ready to go. We're gonna do, since we have a pretty baseline um, weight here, what we can do now is, depending on how the espresso performs when it comes out, it's gonna tell us a lot about how we wanna adjust this grind size. So if it runs really fast, then we can tighten that up. If it runs too slow, then we can uh, you know, loosen it up. And so now we get into you know, the technical side of things. But uh, this is where I think it's most interesting because once you nail it, you nail it. You, know, you, can taste, you can really taste the difference between a bad shot and a good shot. And you, you're confident that people can replicate this. Absolutely. It's all, all that matters, um, you know, if you have the right equipment, is that your roaster is, uh, you know, consistently roasting at the same parameters that they say they, they do. And uh, we do, so. I know it's tempting to use all the microfibers from the garage for a lot of the guys, <laughs> but it'd be nice to have something specific to this area, you know, something that makes sense. And I know it's... Um, Gonna be a little short of a shot because I didn't adjust the weight yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this so we can put a scale under it. There we go. So, right around 25 seconds, 39 gram finish. Pretty much where we needed to be there. So science, you know, would tell us that this is a pretty on par shot. And it definitely is. You know, we're dialed in here, good to go. And so for, you know, when we talk about the how-to videos, um, it's just gonna be fine micro adjustments for taste at this point. But, um, from a parameter standpoint, we're dialed in. Now it's just about, you know, fine tuning as, uh, as coffee gets a little older, newer, everything like that. But we're set up here. I think uh, now we're just gonna set everything else up. One on there. So I got these two little espresso cups. So since it's a shot split, we can see this. And so um, we've got in one of these, we have the Lunar too, the other espresso scale. So. Um, what we can do is we can also use this one to um, to weigh out those shots and see how we're doing as well. So we got the we talked about the pearl there. The lunar here is um, the small version of this, so metal, nice finish to it. So, you know, very similar. Otherwise, everybody, every cafe you go to has has these guys, but they don't make them waterproof, and I don't know why my one thing and so we're good there so if i hit this i've got the weight and the time here so i can hit the start and see how we're looking here so way too fast right we're we're running real fast so what i'm going to do is tighten this up here uh you know use the same dose and it's going to keep slowing that down until we're at the right spot what we're shooting for is we want to do around double the dose so if we're putting 18 here we're gonna shoot for 36 to 40 out here at about you know 20 to 30 seconds that'll that'll put us in the right position to where we can start tasting so a good bit of the variables are uh, you know allotted by us yeah you know, or you know the machine they they gives us a good amount of variable control so that has all of the you know the pressure the temperature everything like that is good to go uh, what we're gonna be doing here adjusting is the, um, obviously where the coffee is going to be the same. So we're adjusting the grind size here, which is just controlled by that. The dose, which is what we weigh out here, we're going to keep that a constant 18. So if we keep that a constant 18, 
which if we can't get fine enough, we may bump up, but let's keep it at 18 for now. If we're keeping that constant, the only thing we're really changing is this grind size if we have parameters that we're looking for at the end. So now that we've kind of pared it down to one variable, we can play around with that, try and get as close as we can, and then, uh, you know, taste, taste, taste. Is this a single temp? Is there, no, is there a temperature adjustment on this? There is, but I've, uh, it was on that wheel on the other side, okay. and I uh, moved it out of the way as to just kind of keep it, you know, consistent. Gotcha. So you've set, you have a temp that you set and you leave it. Exactly, right. Traditionally, um, people tend to leave it anyways. You know, there's not, um, there, I, the, the variation of temperature is only a couple degrees, really, um, before it starts getting a little unusable. Yeah. This is starting to become a real barista setup. I'd say you're probably the only non-coffee enthusiast with um, the coolest home barista setup. It's usually the way I roll. Yeah, there need, there's a new segment, you know, it's like coffee appreciatist. Mm. Um, so let's go ahead and tighten that down a bit more. Feel it closer to the uh, So dump that. All right. And so now that we changed the, the, you know, the distance between the burrs like we talked about before, this is going to be less weight on here since it's the same amount of time. So if we're talking variables, you know, we change the, the time it takes to grind the coffee. So this time will need to be adjusted if we want the same output. So we were at 18, 18.1. 18 so we're at now 13.3. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know, maybe throw another well, three seconds on that, let's try. So, you know, different um, regions have different um, altitudes. An altitude is a directly correlation with um, density of the coffee. So if the coffee is more dense, for example, uh, it's gonna be a little harder to grind. Oh, look at that. So, now we can go ahead and get that in there. And so uh, what you will see here is a little bit of clumping as it gets finer, which is, um, you know, normal, ultimately. There are, there's um, tools that you can get that uh, break up these clumps. So it's like these little kind of like pins and you can stir that around to make that, um, those clumps go away because ultimately from a like water dispersion standpoint, you want consistency from the top to the bottom, left to right, everything like that. Ooh, one for good luck. And in the operations, we'll talk about, you know, proper maintenance and everything like that for getting that dialed in. So just for this, I can eyeball it here. Well, okay, we're looking good now. It's running slow, maybe too slow. Let's see. I'm waiting for it. Oh, here it comes. Too slow though. So we overshot ourselves. So what do you, you change the coarseness of the grind? Is that what you just That's said? That's correct. Okay. And so see how it's just kind of bleeding out? It'll pick up for sure. But um, this is going to be overly bitter um, and just not what we're looking for. You know, bitter way to what a lot of people call bold. And so while it looks good, we know that because of that, uh, the time it took to come out, usually you want about three, four seconds. That was maybe 10. This um, will not be what you want. That's not what you want. I don't know if you want to try it. No. <laughs> it's not right. No. All right, so we found our middle ground, you know. There's, we're, we're, it's hiding somewhere in between those two. So once you do this, we're not gonna do this again. No, I mean all stay with the same beans. Everything, yeah. We so this is uh, the coffee that's in there is the obsessed garage blend that we made. Yeah, right. So um, yeah, and that will stay very consistent. And uh, year to year, the farms that we included in that blend right. are very consistent producing farms. So even the coffee at the agricultural level. Right, is and so um, yeah, we talked about you know maybe a little. There's these things called knock boxes, and it's just a like a little steel bar with a rubber around it. Yeah. And you just would dip this on it. 
and hit that out of there. So, because you don't want to have to do this the whole time, you know. All right, and then you get your towel all dirty. So I went um, on this. There's indicator marks. I went three down, so or three coarser, so. We're looking pretty good. I'm going to get some more coffee just to top this off, just so we don't run dry. We remember what we saw last time. We remember what we saw the time before that. If we're doing anything right and we didn't overshoot the coarsening, this should be a little slower. Well, it's a little fast. See, but a lot better than the first one. We're still probably running about 10 seconds too quick. Looking good though. We're at four and a half right now. Probably go to three. It's getting better. You know, people uh, struggle to get to that perfect shot of coffee. And um, you know, a lot of people look at coffee as, uh, you know, oh, I'm just going to hit the button and it's going to come out. Uh, and we were talking about this in some of the product overviews is like, I think a lot of the budget espresso um, involves a certain level of complacency. Um, you know, the, the understanding that I'm not going to get exactly what I get at my coffee shop. But if we are, um, you know, replicating the commercial experience, it would only make sense to fully replicate it. All right, so we're good there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go to three. And so I'm doing that when I'm changing it. Because um, if, I, if I just change it, hit it, it's likely going to have a little bit of variation to it. So let's go ahead. Oh, we're really close. Okay, good. So, so you're going less coarse. So now I overshot my coarseness. Okay. So we're going just a, t a tiny bit tighter on the grind. Yeah. And so and that'll slow it down a little bit. Yep, exactly. So the coarser the grind or the, you know, the finer the grind, the harder it is going to be for water to pass through that pot. And so the harder the water is to pass through, the, um, you know, the more kind of that nice syrupy look out of the uh, portafilter is what we're looking for. So, oh, and that's something we want to avoid for the next one, but keeping this dry is important because it'll pull up coffee and you can feel it but that won't severely affect where we're going right now. I imagine there's gonna be a good bit of teaching people in the tutorial how to lock that in. Cause it, uh, it's a little finicky, but once you get it, you get it. Also the steam should be hot chocolate ready. All right. Perfect. This is where we wanna be. So I'm gonna count in my head right now, you know, just kind of to get a baseline. But when we, we, if we break out the scale, we can get a lot more specific with where we need to be. So this, we should be pretty damn close. We are very close. So what I'm gonna do now is I, uh, you know, I'm coming off a cold, so my taste isn't perfect right now, which is sad, but I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the grind just a hair bit more, and we should be off to the races. Cool. All right. So, uh, you know, we got the Merzoka set up in there. Mm -hmm. um, now what we're going to go ahead and do is, uh, you know, if you're a traditional coffee drinker, you don't want to spend a lot of time dialing that in. Um, we've got what I think is the best coffee maker out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, super bare bones, we talked a little bit about this being, you know, a good vehicle for boiling water and sending it over the coffee. That's what I look at a quality coffee maker as. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I mean, this is... So let's put it in there. Yeah. And you can kind of give me some guidance. Where should it go? Yeah, exactly. 
is this corner of the right spot or do we need to yeah. occupy some I mean, more space? The, the thing for me is I, um, I want to be mindful of the grinder. So let's, let's set this here for now and then grab the coffee grinder because that's going to be a pretty important part as well. I think I like the idea of having kind of these grinders in an area where you could have almost like your coffee here, something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, but we will, you know, same thing we did with those, want to tuck these cords in a way that keeps it kind of low profile. Yeah, I'll, I'll tie that all up. Yeah, this I already did, it's just two. You just leave it on there. You're not gonna need anything else. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab some coffee and I'm gonna weigh that out. Is this the same stuff yep. for both? Yep, same stuff. And that's another misconception that I think a lot of people carry. Mm. is that there's like an espresso roast yeah. or an espresso bean and a uh, coffee bean, but it is just the, uh, the same. Yeah. And so um, this is easy. So all we need to know if we're going to weigh our coffee in here is we're just going to do a 1 to 15 ratio. So what one. Does that, what does that mean? Uh, so one gram of coffee to every f 15 grams of water. Okay. And so a uh, milliliter, one milliliter of water is one gram of water, which is really convenient for our sake. So it converts nicely. And so let's go ahead and do 30 in here. And so pull a couple of those out. All right, there we go. Okay. And this, uh, this will grind whatever you put in it. It won't like spit out a certain amount. So we're just gonna throw that in there. Cover that back up. You just hit this button down here. See if you got a lot of torque. <laughs> and that has an auto off function too. So once it senses there's nothing in there, it kicks off, which yeah. is great. And so we've got our coffee here. There's a little uh, metal paddle right here that you can hit just like that. And it'll knock any loose grounds out as well. So I'm gonna set this aside. That's our coffee. I'm going to go ahead and get the filter and then some water. And one thing, um, one thing I think everybody tends to forget, but I think is really important is, um, before you put this in there, it's good to wash this filter out with water. So rinse it out. So I like to fill this all the way up with water and just pour it. Uh, because if you, uh, you know, if you, did that without it, you would taste the paper. There's a, there's a YouTube guy who's uh, really into coffee and he's, he has like a 30 minute long video about making a paper filter tea. Just um, like all the different brands of paper filters and hot water and trying them all and comparing how papery they taste. But it's definitely got a taste, so. Got our coffee there. Just pour that in. That's that. And then this will just slide right into place just like that and sit. And so what we're gonna do is just fill that up. And uh, if we remember, we put 30 grams in there. So we're gonna do at a one to 15, 450 grams, basically uh, you know, a one half pot. Uh, Cause that would be 500 grams of water for the one half pot. And uh, then we just hit it on, we're good to go. Um, one uh, OG uh, solution that we do for a lot of home installs is um, wherever we put this, we install a water tap above it. So it just go, you know, water would just flow right into here. But so, you know, th for the sake of demonstration, you can pretty much kind of nail this down. Um, you know, this is a, so, before I continue, this is a liter right here. This is markings in reference to a liter. So 250 grams, 500 grams, 750, and 1,000 grams in milliliters. So if we shoot right below the one half mark, you know, we're gonna be pretty, pretty damn close to 450, so. And uh, if you really wanna get specific, you know, you can obviously weigh your water out as well. And so this right here is a half pot and full pot. What this adjusts is the flow rate. So if you have a half pot, which is what we're making, it's gonna slow the flow rate down. Um, but if you hit this on, it's just gonna go faster. So you come here, wake up in the morning. 
you were going to have a little formula here for how much to put in there to grind. Mm -hmm. They check the weight, throw it in there, put the water in, 10 minutes later, good to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the this your pot should be anywhere four to five minutes right there. So I figure, you know, you wake up in the morning, you can do this, you can do your weight, throw it in there. Even, um, you know, like I'll leave the water in there overnight, for example, and I'll have the filter ready, wet the filter, pour the coffee in, hit it, go do whatever else I'm doing. So it's a pretty seamless process. And, it, it, you know, the extra step of weighing the coffee for the, the huge difference in quality that you get mm -hmm. is, um, is completely, you know, it's a huge change. So. And then I, you uh, do whatever you do with your milk and all that nonsense, right? Yeah, exactly. And yep. Yeah. And uh, same goes for this. If you were to do, you know, your milk for this guy, you can make that and then go ahead and steam it up, everything like that. And this is uh, for tea right here. So if you put a little cup under there and that comes out of the steam boiler, so extra hot. Mm. But yeah, steaming milk will be a fun one for sure. But yeah, so you know when I catch this uh, as being finished, uh, I just go ahead and turn it off because I don't want that to, you know, cook the coffee or anything like that. Um, but some people like the fact that they can pour one, and then have a hot cup next, you know, waiting for them. That so. only looks like a quarter of a pot. Yeah, in terms of that, yeah. So um, we can brew a full pot, but a full pot would be um, more than a liter, you know. So we we went off of like. And these are Europeans, so uh, this the four cup line um, would be like oh, four smaller cups. Okay. So um, the a true half pot would probably be um, you know at the five level on there, which would be um, right under three quarters of a liter. So I like how it looks. Yeah, I, I and I'm sure you can you know appreciate the function and the you know the value. I think, from a coffee perspective. I think the key is you guys got to work on the, as I'm still confused on what I would do. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think, um, yeah, a little cheat sheet will go a long way for a lot of people here. Because I think people come here to exceed, to have their expectations, you know, exceeded. Like, they want to be able to, to have that sense of, you know, excellence in all of the things that they're doing here. So all the products they use, all of the things that they touch, all of the touch points in the garage, mm -hmm. it's like their ideal version of a garage. Yeah. And so there's still, you know, there's still learning, learning steps involved in detailing cars, you know, how you use like bead maker or drying aids, right. anything like that. Um, there's still a level of introduction that's involved in that process. Yeah. Same thing if, you know, if you want to play with, with the big guys, if you want to experience something that is of excellence, there's work that's involved to make it excellent. And uh, I think that's what this is all about. So if people come here to have their expectations challenged, uh, this is a really great way to do so. All right, so here's our setup. You know, step one for me with this in this whole concept was to, you know, again, bring in an expert and then get it at our first property to make it a an experience uh, kind of like you know the garage you can go in the garage and it has everything uh, and everything in there is professional grade and so this makes me a little nervous and i think i would feel the same way if i didn't if i wasn't so entrenched in you know detailing and, and home theater stuff uh, but I don't think this is all that all that different. So we're going to have uh, a tutorial series for those that come to the house, and then if this is of interest, and we start um, like I think this, you know, you'll probably turn a lot of you on to something that may be a bit better or a lot better than just you know using the thing from Williams and Sonoma that that looked shiny. So I think that uh, having it here uh, for people to come and experience and to use. Uh, and then, you know, partnering uh, with Coffee House and then, you know, working on continuing to provide information. I think this could be really cool. It certainly looks cool here in the, in the, in the, the, the pantry area. Um, but uh, we'll have some more content on this, more, more information. You certainly reach out to the guys at Coffee House uh, if you have questions at coffeehouse.com. 
coffeeha.us. Yeah. We'll put it in the description, so yeah. we'll check yeah. that out. Uh, if you need some consulting, some advice on you know buying your machines, um, we'll get our guys trained up as well. We're going to offer this through destinationog.com is the plan, uh, and then we'll build out a robust. Um, um, you know, I guess a robust set of information videos and, and descriptions information on this stuff and we'll see how it goes. Um, so I hope you'll bear with me as we kind of uh, work our way through you know, bringing in outside experts and figuring out you know, how to provide you know, solutions to problems that a lot of people didn't even know they had. You know, a problem that, you know, like doing something like the, the third wave water, water additives. Um, and that's a solution to a problem that you didn't know you had, that maybe your water was causing your, your beverage to not taste as, as good. So we're going to continue to chase, you know, providing those resources. And then for our destination properties, continuing to hone our process here. Uh, my ultimate goal would be I have a bunch of QR codes on this, you know, somewhere on this wall or on each item, and then a video pops up so you can get a consistent, you know, quality cup of whatever you're, whatever you're trying to make. So anyway, thanks for watching, and um, we'll continue to experiment with, uh, with um, expertise on, you know, the solutions to the problems you didn't know you had. So anyway, we'll see you in the next one. And um, yeah, go to destinationog.com and see if there's a week that uh, lines up with uh, what your uh, you know what your vacation schedule looks like. So see you in the next one. Thanks. Mm -hmm.